Has Ford ever built a worst car? And what exact car is it? Here in today's video, we'll let you know the worst car Ford has ever built, and if there's none, we'll let you know too. Join us as we dive into details you need to know. There's no doubt about it, Ford has made some great cars over the years, such as the Escort, Mexico, the original Mustang, and the F-150 Lightning all showcase the best the Blue Oval can muster. More than 100 years of car building history under its belt, not everything can be a hit, yeah? So we're gonna help you track down some of the worst cars cars Ford has ever built. It's basically the Model T, isn't it? No knock against the Tin Lizzie, just that it's likely objectively worse than every car that came after it, which I suppose opens up how it compares to the handful of cars they built prior. It's slow, kind of flimsy, and most people couldn't just hop in and drive it without a lesson prior. I feel, quote, tomorrow's question would be their best car though. If you had said anything besides the Ford Tempo, you just were never there. Pintos really weren't that bad, certainly better than their Chevy Vega competitors, they're saying first as the worst. Sales between 1984 and 1994, the Ford Tempo was one of the Blue Oval's early attempts at aerodynamically designed cars. It was a bit of a sales hit, with Ford shifting more than 100,000 units in the first year alone. Neither economical nor sporty, the Ford EcoSport was killed off in the US last year after Ford announced plans to reduce its production in India. A lot of ideas for the Ford Taurus came in today such as, you didn't like its engines, its stylings, or its interior across almost every generation. I have several cars in my time. I must say the absolute worst Ford ever built was 1987 Thunderbird. According to my research, someone got this car in 1989. It had 19,000 miles on it. The first day driving, it started to stall out. He had every hose on the car replaced due to leaking. The transmission quit working, then the engine mounting blocks were replaced, then it was the windshield wipers, absolutely the worst car. That was the last Ford I ever bought, stated by the person. Just based on the client who bought them, it has to be the Flex, an awful lump of metal mostly driven by awful drivers who are just awful people. The official SUV is usually, I want to speak to your manager. There's plenty of not so great ones, but I'd say objectively the worst one that nearly exploded and killed dozens of people. In total, 27 deaths were tied to the Ford Pinto and its tendency to explode. That definitely is enough reason to count it as one of Ford's worst cars. Honestly, I'd completely forgotten about the Ford 500. It's a dull car with dull looks and a dull name. Indeed dull. It is indeed dull to look at, wasn't particularly fancy or high budget, and most people would have no idea what it was if you asked them. They promised so much that the C-Max was going to be a better one, but it was a complete flop. Not only was it heavy to drive and perform like a barge going around corners, it was unresponsive, fuel thirsty, and had a totally uncomfortable driving position, plus it was a completely crazy one when it comes to cleaning it with lots of little slots and unnecessary cubby holes. It was changed for a 2018 Kuga, and that has been a nice car in comparison. Most people that drive around in an SUV should probably be driving around in a minivan, just maybe not a Ford C-Max minivan. Ford Aspire, no one, I mean no one wanted to buy this even if Ford made them for 4 years or even 5. There is literally nothing aspirational about this car. Mustang GL was bought by someone in 1991. It has a 3 liter V6 automatic, burgundy paint, burgundy interior, no power windows, no power locks, no air, no cruise, no tilt. A complete plain Jane that was, at best, a mediocre imitation of a legendary make and model. However, the Mustang II sounded good at first, a smaller platform, less weight, potentially more nimble, perfect for a sports car. But Ford based it on the Pinto platform, it came with a 4-cylinder engine making under 90 HP, but you could get an optional V6 just over 100. They did eventually offer a V8 though, with a whopping 140 HP. I was going to say that the Honda Civic has better performance, but that sounds too generous. To put things in perspective, the Mustang 2 performance was about on par with a modern-day Mitsubishi Mirage. And here we have yet more proof that not all Mustangs are created equal. The Mustang 2 is basically a rebodied Ford Pinto, so brought with it further risks of combustion. 75 Ford Granda slash Monarch, it took a special kind of talent and very precise engineering to rying only 72 horsepower out of a 4.1 L inline 6. The car took 25 seconds to go from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour when equipped with an automatic transmission. They also rusted at the mere mention of road salt. These cars weren't exactly worthy of the Falcon platform on which they were based. 
Ford's attempt to take on the luxurious sedans coming out of Germany in the 1970s didn't go quite as planned. During the mid-80s, while driving the Ford Escort L, it would randomly stop running all the time. Middle of an intersection, stops running. Driving down the street too, stops running. Look at it funny, it stops running. Jokingly, when you're thankful that someone has to run into your car, you know it's a bad one. A big debt. Ford Explorer, more than 200 deaths and 700 injuries in the US have been blamed on Ford Explorer rollovers on Firestone May Pop tires. In the early 2000s, Ford Explorer and its Firestone tires proved to be a deadly combination. Rightfully, it's regarded as one of the Ford's worst cars of all time. Ford Transits. Nothing is good about them. The strut bolts sit under the dash, replacing quarter panels in them that make you want to rethink your career choices and question life in general. Even makes you think on how in the heck did they hire the guy that designed it? Funny. The front glass is just as dumb as the van itself when they took what could have been a simple design and decided to completely overcomplicate it. The turbos go out, and I don't know why they decided to have two rebars up front, and the hood hinges a mystery to adjust when they get replaced. You'd be better off using a donkey and a wagon as a work van than the Transit. In fact, the donkey is more reliable, cheaper to run, and not as complicated. Obviously, you take offense to the simplicity of the first generation Ford Fiesta premiered in 1976. The first ever Fiesta was small and kind of cute, but underpowered. It lacked the charm of the other hatchbacks coming out of Europe at the time, like the Renault R5 or the MK1 VW Polo. It's always tough reviving an iconic car, and the Thunderbird showed just how wrong things can go. It looked a bit like someone tried to describe the original to a designer over the phone. On top of the weird exterior, the inside was pretty naff, and the car didn't handle anywhere near as well as it should have. I'm still shocked at the worst vehicles Ford built. At first, I didn't expect the points to be as much as these, but all the same, it happens. Let us know your feelings and thoughts about the Ford's worst built cars. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and we'll see you next time.